Hello again and welcome back to the channel. So today I'll be reviewing the entire third wave of Valiverse's Action Force line. Had these figures for some time, I just haven't got round to reviewing them as yet. Picked them up from the Big Bad Toy Store. I paid around 32 American dollars per figure, something like that. I'll put the price up on the screen. You can still get Kill Switch and the Steel Brigade Trooper, but unfortunately Pandora and Eclipse, they seem to be the favorites as they are now sold out. So taking a quick look at the actual box, there is a little bit of a change in this wave the color scheme for the box is a little bit different and then on the back they've got rid of that cross cell and they've just put the four characters in the wave uh, still waiting to see what we do with these action points and then some nice artwork on the side as well so i will review these independently so if you're only interested in one then you can skip ahead in the timestamp. but let's take them out of the packaging and take a look okay so starting off with eclipse let's check out her accessories so she comes with an alternate head sculpt a shimmer an assault rifle with scope three ammo clips a sidearm a combat knife a left and right holding hand a left and right cradling hand a left and right trigger hand and the action force stand so taking a closer look at eclipse in hand the first thing that i noticed was the head sculpt they've done a really really good job so i read up on her bio she is half native american and half south american and you can tell with the head sculpt she's definitely got that native american vibe really really nice sculpt she also has this braid sculpted in on the hair man they've done such a good job the hair is all finely sculpted too so an excellent job but she does come with an alternate head sculpt and this has the i think it's called a shimar so let's see what that looks like okay that was really tough to get on i had to put her under the hair dryer for quite a extended period of time it still isn't quite on there uh, it looks great it does look great you are gonna just be stuck with that pose though i guess you can't really move it no and it's just gonna come off i don't know if that's just a poor design or just bad luck on my part getting a figure where it just doesn't quite sit on it's just been under the hair dry now for probably a minute or two and ah oh, there we go yeah it's really really tight <clears throat> so it, it does look great but yeah you're not going to get any movement out of it so i guess that's the uh, that's the price you pay but very very nice sculpt so she also comes with this alternative shimmer i think that's what it's called um probably gonna get someone tell me it's not called that a scarf and then let's pop this back on. Bloody hell. There we go. Flipping neck. Okay, so this is the look which I'll probably go for. I do like this additional head sculpt, but I think this sculpt is just too nice to be hidden away. Um, the figure is obviously a much smaller book, being a female figure, but um, or female character. Another thing which I really like about this wave is the improvement on the vests. So the vest does come off and it just has these two pegs on the side and it's really um, a massive improvement on the first vests. I just didn't like those vests in the, uh, the first series at all. They were really, really difficult to get on and off. So really well done to Valiverse for improving that. So an alternative look. The waist does look a little bit too slim there. It looks a little bit weird. I'll probably display with the vest, but it is nice to have an alternative look. And obviously you can take this off as well. I'm going to leave it on. So, yeah, a great figure. Let's do a quick look at the articulation. So, 
I've been over the articulation so many times with the other figures. I'm not going to go over the, all of the figures in wave three. I'll just go over the articulation with her. It is going to be the same for all of the others. So um, at the head, she is, does have a, um, a dumbbell joint at the top. So she can get down to about there and then up to about there. Obviously, with this head, you're getting no articulation at the head at all. You can't even move it, it's just fixed in place. Butterfly joints at the shoulder. These are still a little bit tight. She has been under the hairdryer for quite some time, but it's still a bit tight. You get all the way around, bicep swivel. Double jointed elbow. And then forwards and backwards on the hinge at the wrist, and then full rotation on the peg. She does have a um, fair amount of ab crunch to about there. And then all the way back to about there. The rolled off hips and she gets complete 360. It's so tight. She does go all the way around. She has a drop down legs. Cut at the thigh so you get rotation. Double jointed knee. boot cut and then rocker at the ankle the only thing I'll say is these figures out of the pack out of the box they are really stiff like ridiculously stiff and I feel like it's gotten worse with wave three even after blasting under the hairdryer she's still really really stiff now if i had to pick between a stiff figure or a loose figure i would pick stiff every time so i guess it's not really a problem but i am nervous that i am going to break one i've been very fortunate with my action force figures so far i haven't broken one yet touch wood but i really really wouldn't be surprised and um, so just just watch out for that Okay, so next up, let's take a look at the Steel Brigade Trooper. So she comes pretty much with the same loadout as Eclipse, starting off with an alternative head, assault rifle with scope, three silver ammo clips, a sidearm, combat knife, left and right holding hands, left and right trigger finger hands, left and right cradling, and a left and a right fisted hand. Finally, she comes with the iconic Action Force stand. All right, so taking a look at the first female Steel Brigade Trooper that we have. Now, this is essentially the same book that we've got with Eclipse, and the accessories are the same as well, but there are some differences, mainly in the paint applications. Uh, just quickly bringing in Eclipse. You can see straight away that the vests are the same. Uh, obviously, there are some difference in the paint apps. The colors are completely different. The um, motif is on the left hand side, right hand side here, and the left hand side there, just under the scarf. But it is essentially the same sculpt. Same with the trousers, the boots, the gloves, and the shirt. And then just moving her to the side, let's do a quick comparison with the male Steel Brigade Troopers that we have. So first off, here is the Big Bad Toy Store Night Ops exclusive. Let's just pop her on a stand. There we are. So the heads are the same size. 
that I did think that maybe we'd get a slightly smaller head for the female version, but they are the same size, but you can see the books are different. And then here is the standard Steel Brigade Trooper. And here is my kit bashed version. That's a G.I. Joe Gung Ho body. There we are. So they work really, really well together. And I'm really pleased that they've got that common theme throughout. Obviously the Night Ops version looks different. It's a shame we haven't seen any other Night Ops figures. Hopefully we will see some. In fact, I think there may be some coming in the next wave that was, um, we had a, some preview shots from uh, Bobby Valla a few months back. I'm pretty sure there was some not up, not up stuff in there. But as it stands, very nice figure and she fits perfectly with the rest of the Steel Brigade. So next let's take a look at Kill Switch. So starting off with the accessories, Kill Switch comes with an alternative head, a sniper rifle, an assault rifle, three ammo clips, sidearm, combat knife, left and right holding hands, left and right trigger finger hands, left and right cradling hands, left and right fisted hands, and of course the iconic Action Force stand. Okay, so let's take a close look at those accessories because she does actually have some unique items. Now, I have to say that I do think this head sculpt is a little bit lazy. They've essentially just taken the trooper, um, I think it's called the Delta Trooper, I can't quite recall, and repainted it. So yeah, it is a little bit lazy. I guess they would have to do um, a completely different sculpt if they were gonna give us two, so can see why they've thrown that in, but let's face it, who's gonna have this head sculpt? She also comes with an identical side arm, just some slight changes in the color applications. Same with the combat knife, same with the hands, but it's the rifles. Uh, starting off with this sniper rifle. This is a nice piece, but correct me if I'm wrong, is the scope on back to front? I don't really know my guns, but that looks back to front. Regardless of that, it is a nice piece. The clip doesn't come out of this one, not really a problem, but this is what sets Kill Switch apart, so far anyway. Likewise, an alternative assault rifle. So this is also quite nice. And this has the three clips. So those accessories really do set her apart. Everything else is essentially the same as what we got with Eclipse and the um, Steel Brigade. And then obviously you get the iconic stand. But then taking a look at the actual figure, this is a really nice head sculpt, just like Eclipse. I think Valiverse are getting better and better with their head sculpts. This is obviously the first time we've seen female head sculpt, so I don't know if it's just it's easier maybe to do a, a female sculpt than it is a male, no idea there. But whatever the case, they're doing a great job. Taking a closer look, she even has a gold nose ring. And her hair is done in all these tiny braids. And it's just really, really well done. It's a soft, pliable plastic. So I think it's too much to ask, but I would have loved another head sculpt. I do think we are getting some additional head sculpt uh, accessory boxes in the next wave that's coming. I can't recall if I saw Kill Switch with one. I think she's getting one. And then the rest of the figure is the same as what we've seen so far, just some color changes. Now I don't have a huge problem with that. It is gonna get a bit tedious. Um, if you have you know, five, six, seven um, Action Force figures all in the Action Force 
um, faction. They're essentially using all the same components. There were a few differences, obviously Sergeant Slaughter and Trigger, but most of them did use the same books, uh, just changing up the colour. So I can see why they've done that here. But I just think that this figure, it just kind of works the dulled down colours, the red shirt, it just, it just works a little bit better. Um, I didn't really think that this one would be a favourite of the wave, but so far, I think this is probably my favourite. Okay, and last up is Pandora. This for me is the standout of this wave. So taking a closer look at the accessories, Pandora comes with one scarf, an assault rifle with scope and suppressor, a scythe, a combat dagger, two pistols, a left and a right gripping hand, left and right trigger finger hand, left and right cradling hands, and left and right fisted hands. Pandora also comes with, of course, the iconic Action Force stand. Okay, so taking a close look at Pandora, the first thing that I noticed with this figure is unlike all the others in the wave, she doesn't come with an alternate head sculpt. And I don't really care about that because this sculpt is just really, really top notch. It does make me wish that I had the, um, the bloody Pandora, the exclusive Pandora. At the time I thought I'll just get one, I won't need the other one, but now that I have her in hand, I really wish that I'd I'd got that. And that's a hard figure to get now, so yeah, missed out there. But um, taking a quick look at the actual head sculpt now, reading up on the bio, she's a, an Irish girl and she has, like, has a brother called Shay, who I'd love to see that figure. Hopefully we'll get that figure further on down the line. And from what I understand, she ran off with a mob boss's wife. The mob boss caught up to her and then gave her what they referred to as a Glasgow smile. Not heard it called that before. I know what a Chelsea smile is. Uh, Chelsea smile is essentially what she has. So she has this massive scar all the way from ear to ear. In this case, it's a Glasgow smile, but it's really well done. She has these piercing green eyes can't quite get that on the camera. Nice tattoo on the back of her head. I mean, it's not a nice tattoo. It's horrible to have a tattoo on the back of your head, but you know, it's well done. And then the hair is really nice too. So she has these uh, blonde streaks, or rather, I guess it would be, she's a redhead and the blonde um, is coming out and the roots are coming through. Either way, it looks really, really good. <laughs> Just like all the other figures in the wave, you can actually take this vest off. There's just a couple of clips here on the side. Okay, so there she is with the vest removed. And that's actually not a bad look either. And then let's see what she looks like with the scarf. The biggest grumble with this wave is how stiff the figures are. She was under the hairdryer for a good minute and she's still really stiff. So there she is with the scarf. So that's a really nice look. I don't mind that at all. She also has this really nice tribal tattoo, uh, tribal Celtic tattoo on her arm. You kind of have to align it, but it's not really a big deal. And then she has these hand wraps all the way from, um, almost by her elbow, all the way down. And you can see they are hand wraps because it goes between the fingers. So she definitely has like a street fighting boxer vibe and they're even dirtied so you can see it's all battered and worn. So she definitely looks like she's come from the streets. 
trousers are also very nice. I think they are different to what we've seen in the wave so far. So this is almost completely a um, unique figure. The boots are a little bit similar to the, the other characters, but everything else is, uh, is unique. In fact, I'm pretty sure when I was watching one of Bobby Vella's um, latest videos, he did mention that this dagger is completely unique to this figure. Might be wrong there, but I'm pretty sure that's what he said. And you can see it doesn't it doesn't really match the others that we've seen so far. So nice to have a, a unique piece. Also, um, this, I don't know if it's an assault rifle, or it's not an assault rifle, it's like an Uzi or something. But this is something I don't think we've seen uh, with a figure yet either. So again, nice to see something different. And then the jacket is also a new piece. Haven't seen this before. Holsters for the sidearms. Just plug in. There we go. So yeah, really nice figure. Very pleased with her so far. Okay, so let's wrap this up with my final thoughts on the third wave in Valor vs Action Force line. This is a solid entry into the collection. Really nice figures here, but I think it will come as no surprise to hear that Pandora is absolutely the standout figure here. Unlike the other three figures that have a very much of a, um, a cookie cutter situation going on here, you know, same books, same accessories, just with different paint application. Not that that's a bad thing, but when it comes to Pandora, she feels almost like an exclusive figure, and I am regretting that I didn't pick up the bloody Pandora version. I can see why she sold out as quickly as she did. The other three figures have really good head sculpts. Eclipse's head sculpt is just next level. You really have to see it to appreciate it. And Kill Switch is not far behind either. I do think that we're getting some head accessory packs in the future. I'm not sure if I saw one for Kill Switch, but definitely for Eclipse, so I'll have to get those. The figures themselves are really nice. I'll just say this. They are really, really tight out of the box and I blasted them under the hairdryer for quite some time and still it is such a chore getting hands in and out and some of the heads unfortunately, um, interchangeable head for Eclipse and Kill Switch, they just don't fit the pegs. I don't know if I just got a bad batch or that's just a design fault but I really just can't get them on those pegs so unfortunately that is a bit of a negative but other than that they are great figures and I'm really really looking forward to what we've got in, coming in the future. So that about wraps it up. I certainly hope that you've enjoyed this video and if you'd like to subscribe then I'd really appreciate that. It certainly helps out the channel. So until next time, take care.